Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd knock you out a review of the Woolly Mammoth Blanket. Now, to be clear, I've had sort of a love-hate relationship with blankets for about 40 years. From what, as a kid watching cowboy movies and I'm sleeping out and reading uh, Bernard Cornwell's novels like Sharp's Rivals and stuff, I always wanted them to work as well as a sleeping bag. And the truth is, they don't. So my favorite sleeping bag for lightweight travel is this Western Mountain Smith bag. So this is basically a five degrees Celsius bag. I've had it down to zero, okay. Weighs 500 grams and super compact. So this is my gold standard. So this is a great sleeping bag. It doesn't want to get wet and it doesn't want to be near flames, okay. So that's its limitation. It does one thing. Right, so I mentioned that the sleeping bag does one job really well. It's a bit of a fragile princess, okay? Unless you're traveling with really reliable shelter to make sure this doesn't get wet, you can get into trouble real quick. So it's a great insulator. The down inside is fantastic. Your body weight compressing on the down underneath does absolutely no insulation at all, so it must be used with an insulation pad on cold ground, otherwise you're going to be miserable and cold. So when I'm traveling in a wet climate, unless I've got my top class tent and I keep this in a dry bag during the day, you need to be very, very careful of it. Okay? Now, the uses of a, a woolly blanket are almost endless, okay? So, you could lay this out, sit around the fire, get underneath the car, you know, with some cordage in that, you can make a uh, an A-frame pup tent, and as long as the sides are steep enough, it will keep rain out, okay? It, eventually, it will wet the fabric, but even wet now, some of the figures are a bit out there, some say a, a wet wool blanket's retains about 80% of its heat retention thing, yeah? Now, I find that the... I don't know how to, how to work that figure out, but it seems to be commonly worked out. Now, I've had plenty of uh, wool outer garments, and they have kept me reasonably warmish or alive in some pretty horrible climates. Now, I used to use polyester um, thermals. I went over to Marina one some years ago, and I've never looked back. Okay, so this is a multi-function. You can run around and uh, dress up like Assassin's Creed, make a cloak out of this. Oh, yeah, I won't bother listing all the things you can do with this, but it is very versatile, okay? So, the wool blanket. So I'll get you some specs out. I'll weigh this on my scales. It weighs in at 1,922 grams. So four of those sleeping bags. According to the box, it's 66 inches, which is 168 centimeters, by 90 inches, by which is 228 centimeters. So she's a big blanket. Okay, it's 80% wool, 10% polyester, and 5% nylon plus 5% something else. God knows what that is. Now I didn't realize when I bought it, it's actually made in India. Anyway, right, that's no dramas. So I've got this nice color here. In case I decide I can't get it to work, it'll make a great Christmas present for someone. So it came with these cards, I've taken some better pictures of it. Makes a big mention here, it's not fire retardant, nor fireproof. Like any natural fire, it will burn. Well, I'm pretty sure it's hard to get wool to burn. Anyway, maybe it's the lawyers writing this stuff. So, 
I was looking at the Frost River one because I have a Frost River backpack. Now I got this one on Amazon, on Amazon Prime, for 56 Australian dollars plus shipping. The Frost River is available locally to me with free shipping. That's 275. That's a lot of money for a blanket. Now the Frost River is 158 centimeters by 178, so and weighs one kilo, so half the weight. So that will double the weight, double the warmth, maybe and big enough for me to do a, uh, a full-on baby wrap or uh, for Americans you call it a burrito wrap so to get in there and wrap yourself in this blanket throw a couple of pins in and see how it performs so tonight we're expecting four to five degrees Celsius overnight so I'm going to try the uh, lettuce out check the measurements it looks well made and it's not scratchy now I had a Italian army blanket years ago and it would take the skin off me this is merino wool and it feels quite nice so you want to be leaping out of your skin with it so guys I'll get this laid out in the yard check the measurements and uh, work out the best method for wrapping me up then we'll give it an overnight test in the safety of my backyard now Guys, when you're trying out different systems and different things, try them out somewhere safe, okay? Don't be tracking off where there's no help or it's going to be an awful long, long night with bits of gear that you're not 100% certain with, guys. So uh, be confident with what you've got and what you need to do before you head out there. Anyway, guys, that's what's coming up. So, guys, I apologise for the wind noise. These are the sizes I've got, so 64 wide, or 163 centimetres, by 92 high, by 234 wide. So, a little bit narrower than it's supposed to be, and a little bit longer. Got to ride the other way around. <coughs> so there's my gear for the night. Closed cell foam mat. I use a single arm. Brand new, clean pair of fresh socks, which is really important. When you sleep, you want nice warm socks. So baby pins to pin this together and we should be right for the night. Well guys that was some night. The wind was howling during the night. It stopped about 4am. At one point it was blowing that hard that I put my head inside my backpack. It was reverberating through my ears. I caught my temperature. It dropped down to uh, about 6 but the wind chill was a lot colder. So I realized I need a bigger pins for my blanket if I'm gonna use the burrito mix. Once I was in, it wasn't easy to get out. Much more difficult than getting out of a sleeping bag. So I need larger pins that are easier to feel in the dark. <sighs> I tried the bank that just doubled over the top of me, directly on top of my sleeping pad. So, pad on the ground, me between that and the double blanket. This blanket was just wide enough to touch the ground. I really would like it a few inches wider for the double. Uh, at one point, I wasn't cold, but I wasn't warm either. So I pulled out my uh, wax cotton uh, poncho, and I put that over, and that nullified the wind effect as well. So that additional layer really makes quite a difference. Even that wind barrier made quite a difference. So, what am I thinking? At two kilos, if I can't get this blanket to keep me really warm, as good as a 500 gram sleeping bag, it's a multi-purpose piece of kit. Gee, it's a tough call, guys. Anyway, guys, if uh, this content helps you out, makes you, helps you make good decisions, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I shall see you next time.